Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to PacWest Magazine, a look at the people and places around the Great Pacific West Conference. I'm your commissioner, Bob Hogue. And I'm Malia Smith from the Communication Department at Hawaii Pacific University. Well, Malia, communication is just the right thing for us to talk about on this week's show, because late last month, the PacWest really got its name out to millions of fans around the country. It was part of a nationally televised basketball game featuring a great team from the islands against the powerhouse from the desert. Here's the commish from from Phoenix, Arizona. The excitement started early in Phoenix, Arizona, where Grand Canyon University fans got to Antelope's Gymnasium well before the tip-off against defending PacWest co-champion BYU Hawaii. Hundreds of fans lined up to get their purple shirts with a sellout crowd expected. Inside, the enthusiasm was mounting as a national television audience waited to see two of the top teams in the PacWest. The Seasiders from BYU Hawaii came in undefeated in conference play, while the Antelopes from GCU were in second place with just one conference loss. And Grand Canyon did its part by making sure that everyone felt great, even the TV announcers. Plus, I'm away from the snow. I live on the East Coast, and every day we've had snow, it seems like, for the last couple of weeks. It was so nice to come out here to Arizona and get away. They, they do. They put on a great show. That, the pregame activities outside, what they call the Mardi Gras, you know, in January in, in Arizona with palm trees, that's impossible. <laughs> uh, preparation, our, our events team is unbelievable. Uh, they work extremely hard with our students, with our faculty, with our staff uh, to try to create excitement. A lot of it is built around gaining some momentum uh, to try to move into our new facility next year. And when the GCU arena opens up, we want it to be the same thing there of energy here today. Talk about just the energy that's been created. Well, a lot of that starts with our students and our staff um, and, and an awful lot of purple t-shirts. Tell us about the excitement in here today. It has been so great to it's see really so many fans. To have so many fans here supporting us and for it to be able to be at home as well as televised. I mean, I feel like the student body has came so far in three years and it's just, it's a really neat experience. The resurgent antelopes of Grand Canyon took control of the game early, utilizing great team ball, and they played impressively throughout the first half, sometimes building up a double-digit lead. But BYU-Hawaii refused to go away quietly and made several runs to keep the game close. By halftime, the game was still very tight and Grand Canyon clung to a precarious five-point advantage. First half, what do you think of that first half? Oh, I think it was great. I love the score right now, 36-31, GCU! <laughs> oh, it's a great game. We're looking for GCU to go number one today in Pac West and defeat BYU all the way. Come on, Lopes, go Lopes! That's great for the conference. That this is what you want. You get on TV, show a, a good game out there like was played today, and more people will probably get behind it. The excitement of the contest between these two high-powered PacWest rivals continued into the second half in a game that would seesaw back and forth. The Antelopes continued with their outstanding team play, several times threatening to take command of the game. But the Seasiders refused to go away quietly, climbing back into contention and trying their best to capture a comfort-behind victory on the road, with Jet Chang and Marcus Whippy leading the way. Eventually, the visitors from Hawaii went up by three as the game pushed towards the final minutes. That's when Grand Canyon's Kyle Speed and company went on a 10-0 run of their own to try and distance themselves down the stretch. Back again would come BYU Hawaii with the tension mounting with every possession and the game would come down to the final minute, still very much anybody's game. Yeah. Yeah. 
until finally Grand Canyon pushed ahead with only seconds to go. BYU Hawaii will get a couple of chances to tie it in the final seconds, but those final efforts were off the mark, and Grand Canyon would hold on to win a true thriller by a final score of 69-64. That victory allows the Antelopes to tie BYU Hawaii for the top spot in an extremely tight Pac West race. Well, I think a lot of it, you know, you have national television, and, and that bodes well for the Pac West. People see the caliber of play in this league. But I think the people uh, here are really excited about basketball. Uh, they certainly know that uh, this team that we were playing was uh, defending conference champions. And so I think there was just a lot of uh, energy in the building that uh, just carried over, and I, it definitely sparked our guys. You know, I thought we kept fighting back and playing hard, but I, I thought we made some bad decisions towards the end on our shot selection and yet um, you know we didn't shoot well all game long our best shooter was wide open five or six times and didn't knock it down and um, I guess on the road sometimes you're a little weary not not quite as sharp but you know I thought they played well they got after us Woo. well uh, you know they're a good team so we knew they that they weren't going to just roll over and and, and just let us uh, beat them so we knew that they were going to fight, and so we knew we had to fight, you know, and that's what that's why we play the game, though, for games like that. Talk a little bit about what this means to your Grand Canyon program. Oh, it's a great win for us uh, because I, I think that that's the first time we've ever beat them on our home floor. So it's a great win for us. Um, we're really trying to do something special over here at Grand Canyon, and that's just another stepping stone for us. Oh, it was an excellent game. I really enjoyed uh, announcing the game. Both teams came and played tremendously well. They followed the coach's game plan, and they came down to the last second shot. Your thoughts about just how the Pac West basketball stacks up against other games that you've seen so far around nationally? Well, I tell you, I mean, you guys will be right there at the top. I really enjoy watching. I mean, you're talking about Whippy and Chang on one team, and then you're talking about speed and, and the rest of Grand Canyon, you just didn't know who was going to play well. Jelaski played well, and, and Gabby played well, so he just has an array of players from the bench. He had 26 bench points tonight. And if you have a good bench like that, you can go a long way, especially in tournament play. So an impressive victory for Grand Canyon, but more importantly, it was a big win for the Pac West with two of its top basketball contenders putting on a great show for a national television audience and proving once again that Pac West basketball can't be beaten. The Pacific West Conference, from Hawaii and California to Utah and Arizona, it's the most beautiful destination conference in the entire NCAA. Nine outstanding schools, Academy of Art, BYU-Hawaii, Chaminade, Dixie State, Dominican, Grand Canyon, Hawaii Pacific, Notre Dame de Demure, and the University of Hawaii at Hilo. We celebrate our diversity with positive sportsmanship and a proud commitment to our student athletes, the Pac West. I chose Division II because athletes graduate at a higher rate. I can stay closer to home and be an important part of the community. I chose Division II because I can double major. And take part in campus activities. I chose Division II because classrooms are smaller. Students have more time with their instructors. And I can compete for a national championship. I chose Division II for all these reasons and more. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose, I chose, I chose Division II. II. Welcome back to PacWest Magazine with Bob Hogue and Malia Smith and Wayne Coito too. That's right. Wayne always has very interesting feature stories and this week it's no different. Wayne? Thanks Bob and Malia. This week's spotlight shines on Russ Pennell making big strides at Grand Canyon University. When the legendary Lute Olsen unexpectedly and abruptly retired in late October 2008, 
At the start of the University of Arizona men's basketball season, a hush settled over Tucson. Who would be the next man to lead the Wildcats? One of the country's premier college basketball teams and a former national champion. Moreover, who could possibly fill the shoes of one of the great coaches of the modern era? With no time to hire an interim head coach, the university would look to first assistant Mike Dunlap to take over Olsen's spot. I, I believe everything happens for a reason. You know, Mike called me and he just said, Russ, I, I, I don't feel comfortable in taking the job. And he said, you know, I have my reasons and I, and I you know, I respected that. And he said, they're gonna come your way next. And, you know, I was like, can we do this? And he said, absolutely. But even with a trio of future pros on the roster, the Cats found themselves in a bit of a struggle to start the season. Sputtering to a 19 and 13 regular season record, Arizona miraculously received an 11th hour invite to the dance. And even with their renowned history, 25 straight years in the big dance and Pac-10 affiliation, the U of A became a darling of March Madness, climbing all the way to the Sweet 16. But the Wildcats dream came to an end after a loss to Louisville, and so too the run of Russ Pennell as their head coach. I, I will make a bold statement right now. I will be coaching somewhere next year. Okay? Might be my daughter's eighth grade team, but I will be coaching somewhere next year. After his magical run was over last year, so was his career with the Wildcats. You know, for a lot of college coaches, when one door closes, another one opens. And for Russ Pennell, when opportunity knocked again, it wasn't that far from Tucson. Here's Pennell's new home, the Antelope Gymnasium located in Phoenix. Just set it and just go smooth. There you go. In his first year as Grand Canyon's head coach, Pennell led the Division II Antelopes to a 500 record as he enters year two of a seven-year deal. A bold statement made true right here in the Pac West. When I was at Arizona, about two weeks before our season was over, I got a call from a real close friend in Phoenix, and he said, uh, you know, Grand Canyon would be interested in talking to you about being their coach. And, and it wasn't like I felt like Grand Canyon was beneath me. What I felt was that Grand Canyon had made a commitment to athletics. And uh, they, I knew they'd gone through some financial times. And I, I told him uh, respectfully, I'm not interested. Tell him I'm not interested. And then about uh, a couple days later, another friend called and he said the same thing. And I said, well, I already told him I wasn't interested. He said, you may want to be interested. They've got some big plans. Real big plans. Like a brand new 5,000 seat arena where the Lopes will play their home games next year. Now in year two at Grand Canyon, Russ Pennell already has the Lopes who won 10 of their last 13 games in his first year on the upswing with wins over 2010 PacWest co-champions Dixie State and BYU-Hawaii already this season. Arizona, um, in general, doesn't have a lot of high major players every year. There may be four or five, some years up, up to ten. But there's been a lot of really good mid-major type players. And there have been some kids that I felt like would stay and play Division II, even though they had Division I abilities just simply because they wanted to stay at home. And that's what we're finding all of a sudden. We're recruiting uh, the younger classes right now, and there's an interest, and we get kids on unofficial visits that come and look at us. Division II basketball is a great level of basketball. It's, it's a fun level to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, you see skilled athletes. You see kids that I think play for the right reasons. Uh, their agendas usually are a little more pure. Yeah, they'd all like to have a pro career. Most of them know that's not going to happen. And what we're finding as our attendance keeps growing is that people are saying, this is fun. This is a great environment. And then on campus, because most of our schools are small, uh, the students get to know the players, and it's a real family-type environment. I've really enjoyed that part of it, and I, I hope that catches on throughout the conference and really throughout the country that Division II uh, is a great level, and, man, is it fun to watch, and, and I know I'm enjoying coaching it. From the Pac-10 to the Pac-West, the new face of Lopes basketball is proud to be a part of the nation's most beautiful destination conference. Ed, I, I know I told one of our freshmen last year, 40 days of your life, the next uh, four years is going to be in Hawaii. That's not a bad deal. Uh, but, you know, I, I think uh, this conference is very good. And I think because we are so spread out, uh, sometimes maybe uh, the, the people back east don't know that. But uh, I have found that uh, the, the competition's uh, outstanding. I think this year will be the exact same way. There's just some really, really good teams. At Grand Canyon, Pennell's at home and feels fortunate to have been able to stay in the state of Arizona. 
my children to them Phoenix as their home. And I know when we went to Tucson, we thought that was going to be a little bit longer. And unfortunately, Coach Olson got sick and the, and uh, the rest of that is history and they've made changes and I was okay with that. But when I informed my children we would be having to leave Tucson, their biggest concern was we were going to leave Arizona. And so when the Grand Canyon job came along and I saw all that they were doing and I knew professionally that I could uh, enjoy it, uh, it just made sense. And uh, anytime you can uh, really, truly put your family first and, and uh, you know, uh, accommodate them and the things they want. That makes you feel good as uh, the leader of your home, and, and we're real blessed to get to stay in the Valley. Expect Pennell to stay a while as he hopes to take the Antelopes to the NCAA promised land. And while it may never be the Sweet 16, 2009 will always be a sweet memory. To do it the way it happened at U of A was uh, an incredible time. I stay in touch with those players and my staff from that time, and, and we talk about that because when uh, Coach Olson uh, just uh, suddenly stepped down, you know, we were kind of like a ship without a rudder. We didn't know where we were going. We didn't know what was going to happen. And so what we tried to do was just hold it together. And we knew we had, you know, we had three pros. That was a good way to start. And uh, I didn't try to overcoach them, just get the ball to, to Chase and Jordan. And I knew we had a chance. But, you know, the biggest thing was uh, it, it shows when a group of people will come together, put their agendas on hold, and try to do something special. And that's exactly what happened. We had no idea it'd lead to the Sweet 16, but it was a magical ride and, and the friendships and the kindred spirit that we had among ourselves, I know that'll be lifetime memories that we'll talk about for the next 15 to 20 years. And for us, Pennell, nothing would be sweeter than to spend those 15 to 20 years right here at Grand Canyon. From Phoenix, we come to the islands for my highlights from the Hawaii Challenge, a tournament featuring the four Pac West schools from the 50th state. McCabe Gym was the site of the Hawaii Challenge hosted by Shawnee University, a mid-December prelude to the conference season. The first game of the night pitted the HBU Sea Warriors against Outer Island foe UH Hilo, and the teams would be close all the way through. The smooth stroke of Dirk Snell got the Vulcans off to a fast start. Here he is hitting one of his game-high six three-pointers. But HBU's aggressive guard play kept the Sea Warriors within reach. A strong move to the basket by Jelani White and the foul got the HBU faithful believing. But not even HBU can ice Snell's hot hand that even triggered the gym's fire alarm. But when it looked like the Vulcans might pull away, an Adrian Dindel block on one end led to a Roderick Ulmer three at the other, and the Vulcans soon found themselves in a hole. But well, that's when Hilo coach Jeff Law turned to upperclassmen Tim Austin and Justin Smith to bring the Vulcans back within a basket. With Hilo now in striking range, HBU coach Jaron Vorderbrogi called timeout to keep his team in the game. And they responded with a Nick Frazier bucket to put HBU back up by three. But the Vulcans refused to go away. Down only by one with seconds to play, a strong Andrew Gibson drive to the basket, and Hilo took a one-point lead. With time ticking away, HBU misses a shot but draws a foul, sending Smith to the bench with five fouls. But Frazier fails to convert either free throw, and HBU is forced to foul with 17 ticks. Gibson hits both free throws at the other end to put the Vulcans back up by three. The Sea Warriors race the ball down court, and when it looked like they might not get a shot off, it's LeBrent Chappelle burying his only three with one second left to send the game to OT and the HPU faithful into a frenzy. In OT, another Snell three put the Vulcans up by four with a minute to go, his game high 22nd point. But once again, the Sea Warriors refused to back down. A Frazier three with just 15 seconds to go, cut the lead back down to one. An HPU foul sends Lavelle Shipman to the line, and after he misses both free throws, HPU has a chance for heroics once again. But it's Shipman redeeming himself with a heads up play, and Snell secures the ball and the one point exciting victory for Hawaii Hilo. This win. Um, we had to do it for ourselves, to be honest. 
I fouled out, but my team stayed composed and they just played hard. Missed some free throws, but didn't let it get to them. Made some big free throws, played some defense, got some big rebounds, came out with a win. Any win is, is a tough one. The Hawaii Challenge is tough. HPU plays very, very hard. That's the first time we've really seen them. And, um, you know, they're, they're going to be tough down the road, too. But uh, we need to take things and learn, um, you know, little things like fouling the guy so he couldn't get the three-point shot, three point shot up. I think we will. I hope we will. And I look forward to, you know, I'm looking forward to this season. Game two of the night saw longtime rivals BYU Hawaii and Chaminade in a clash decided mostly in the paint where seven-footer Mamadou Diara seemed to have his way all night long, getting several easy shots en route to team-high 19 points, including this thunderous slam. But Ken Wagner's guys wouldn't let down and neutralize Shaman's big man with a flurry of threes. Here's Jake Dastrup with one of his three for the night, and Junior Ale, who chipped in two of his own. Preseason Player of the Year Jet Chang, who finished with 19 points, did his best to keep the game close as he pirouettes to the rim. But in the end, it was the three-point shooting of the Silver Swords, led by an incredible four three-pointers from Wally Koulibaly, and even more unreal six trifectas from Shane Hansen, who finished with 19 points of his own. Shamanad takes the Hawaii Challenge with a decisive 87-76 victory over BYU Hawaii. Um, it's just this tournament's a, a, a nice tournament because it's a preseason preview to uh, the league and everything. So we just we had a, a tough tournament out in Seattle. We wanted to come back and try to get everything going, and we had a couple a couple hard um, practices to try to get playing harder and rebounding, doing the small things. So I felt we feel pretty good about it. There's uh, some adjustments we have to make, but. Um, stuff starting to click a little bit. And it's always hard coming back from Maui, but I think we played with a lot of energy tonight. Obviously, Mamadou was a huge factor in that, and, and Bennett, of course, and uh, Shane always stretches them out. So, guys responded well, and they came back, and this, this was, uh, it was nice to pick up two this weekend. Looks like it'll be another exciting year for Pac West men's basketball. Everyone asks you what you're going to be. Maybe you don't know yet, but one thing is certain. When you attend a university that's ranked among the best in the nation, you're bound to go far. Hawaii Pacific University. Get where you want to go. Commissioner Bob Hogan, Malia Smith, back with you on PacWest Magazine. Time for our weekly trip into some of the best stories we've offered to you over the years. Here's our latest trip into the PacWest Magazine vault. With a score at 62-59 in favor of the home team, the Lady Sea Warriors had 12 seconds and a throw-in. Trying for the last shot, HBU point guard Taylor Craig received the inbounds pass looking for Paris Gravely coming off the screen. When Gravely couldn't get a shot off, she handed it over to a cutting Hopkins Vandenacker who threw a pump fake and with her opponent in the air, got an open look at the basket. I would have never imagined I would have made that. <laughs> Is is ridiculous. Um, I knew we needed a shot, and I've been practicing threes because last year I wasn't very a very good shooter, and just to hit a big shot like that, I was just in shock. I didn't know what I was gonna do. Like, I went blank for a moment. And I was like, wait, I got to play still. Uh, probably the biggest shot of her career tonight. You know, to tie that game, send it overtime. Um, I had to get on her, you know, because she was sitting there kind of stunned and celebrating. And you know, it was two, still yeah. two seconds on the clock. I was like, hey, you got to get back on defense, <laughs> but you know. Um, just a great effort by her. Double-double, 26 points, 13 rebounds. I mean, tremendous effort and uh, just really proud of her. The 5'10 Ford is a graduate of the storied Konawaina High Girls program on the Big Island, where she was selected All-State in both her junior and senior years. Basketball is a way of life on her home island, and Hopkins Vandenacker is just one of several Big Island girls that have gone on to play collegiately, with many of them staying home in the Pac West. Well, they have a great coaching staff up there who are dedicated and they teach the children from when they're little and they grow up. I didn't, I didn't start till I was like 12, 13, so I was a late bloomer, but that only motivates you to go harder, you know, to be at their level. One noticeable difference from last season is the addition to her name. Known just as Mana Hopkins last season, 
This youngest of seven siblings added the name Vandenacker to honor her father, who lives away on the mainland. Since he hasn't been a part of my life, and recently he has been, I just want to, you know, start incorporating, incorporating him in my life, you know, because he is my dad. <laughs> With a year under her belt, Hopkins Vandenacker knows the challenge of being a student athlete in the PacWest. You play on the Big Island High School, you play a few teams in your island, yeah. now you're traveling to San Francisco, you're going to Utah, you're going to Phoenix, what is that like? <laughs> well, it's, it's very difficult because, like, the air up there is a lot different than in Hawaii. Like, to me, this gym is cold. <laughs> and um, just transitioning there and then plus um, homework and stuff. You have to manage your time wisely. You can't be goofing off and going sightseeing, but then you also have to make time for that homework. With a solid core of players returning, blended with a few new faces, including former high school teammate Jasmine Ava Williams, Hopkins Vandenacker hopes to lead her team to new heights. To go all the way. I mean, with this team, I believe we can go all the way. There are some dedicated, passionate players, and I, I think we could go all the way. What do you mean by go all the way? Uh, maybe win conference. <laughs> Hopefully, I really want to. I mean, with another exciting PacWest women's basketball season just kicking off, expect the tightest race for the conference crown ever, and maybe even a few buzzer beaters along the way. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of PacWest Magazine. For the latest results and news from around the conference, check us out on the web at thepacwest.com. Thepacwest.com is where you can check out all the scores and standings and much more. So be sure to check us out there and then get out to a game to enjoy some of our awesome student athletes in action from around the PacWest. For Malia Smith and Wayne Coito, I'm Commissioner Bob Hogue. Thanks for watching and see you next time right here on PacWest Magazine.